Hey, it's Craig. I just wanted to let you know that you can listen to Canadian History X early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. If you like, you can support the podcast for as little as $3 a month. Just go to patreon.com slash Canada EHX. You can also donate to the podcast by going to CanadaEHX.com and clicking donate, or you can go to buy me a cup of coffee slash Craig U. All of these links are also in my show notes. And for people who donate, I have various levels of benefits. For $5, you get a thank you at the start of the next episode of Canadian History X, Canada's Great War, and from John to Justin, and on social media. For $10, you get everything from the $5, plus this episode is sponsored by, with your name at the start. Also, I'll state it's sponsored by you on social media. For $20, everything from the $5 and $10, plus a second episode sponsored by you, and promotion of something you're working on. And for $50, everything from the $5, $10, and $20 plus, you get to choose a topic for me to cover on Canadian History X. If you like, you can email me at craig at canadaehx.com. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is Craig Baird, C-R-A-I-G-B-A-I-R-D. And I'm on Instagram and TikTok where I put up daily videos about Canada's history. Just go to my username, Bairdo37. And you can find weekly videos on Canada's history on my YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash c slash Canadian History X. If you want to find transcripts of every episode I've ever done, you can go to my website, canadaehx.com. And there's over 700 posts on Canada's history there. I have a bit of an odd request. I'm going to be moving to Canmore, likely in May. And I thought I'd put it out there that if anybody is got a place to rent... Well, let me know, because Canmore is a very difficult place to find rentals for. I have a dog and a cat, and it's not easy. I'll be moving when I eventually find a place. It's not like I'll get down there without a place, but I thought I would put it out there to any of my listeners who may have a place to rent in Canmore. Let me know. On March 13, 1989, planet Earth was attacked from space. The attack would leave millions without power, costing tens of millions in damages. And while it may seem like I'm talking about an alien attack that slipped under the radar, I'm actually talking about something much more likely, a solar storm. On March 10th and March 12th, two massive coronal mass ejections were shot out by the sun during a very active solar cycle. The first solar flare was an X4.5, which was then followed by a massive M7.3, The first ejection hit the planet and cleared a path for the second, stronger ejection, which struck the Earth on March 13th and became part of Canadian lore. The second ejection was 36 Earths in size, traveling from the Sun to the Earth at 1.6 million kilometers per hour. The solar storm would hit Quebec especially hard. Prior to the storm hitting, Hydro-Quebec was given an alert, but no precautions were taken because none were possible at the time. The variations in the magnetic field of Earth would trip the circuit breakers on Hydro-Quebec's power grid. Due to the fact that Quebec sits on a massive rock shield called the Canadian Shield, this prevented the current from flowing through the Earth as would be typical elsewhere. The current from the solar storm needed to go somewhere and it found a better path through the high-voltage transmission lines of the province. It then flowed into the power lines and transformers, quickly overwhelming them, shutting them down. The imbalance in the 750 kilovolt transmission line tripped breakers 150 kilometers away. The long transmission lines in the province added another issue for when the storm hit. At the time, Hydro-Quebec knew for two decades that its long transmission lines, north-south axis, and the Canadian Shield made it especially susceptible to magnetic storms. The province had looked at splitting the system into two to prevent province-wide blackouts, but this was abandoned. André Mercier in Hydro-Quebec would state, quote, Splitting the system in two would leave us with two very weak systems, end quote. The power failures would extend into the United States where over 200 grid faults occurred, but operators were able to work around the issues and avoid any major blackouts. The James Bay network would go offline in less than 90 seconds, shutting down 21 gigawatts of power and sending the entire province into the dark for nine hours an estimated 6 million people lost power. People woke up to cold homes, businesses and schools closed, and the Montreal Metro had to shut down despite morning rush hour, while the airport also had to close. 
The blackout would cause many citizens of Quebec to levy blame to the provincial government, not realizing the enormity of the event. Most believe there was just a blackout because of an under-maintained power grid. The blackout was the third province-wide power failure to occur in the previous 12 months. There had also been 19,000 smaller power failures throughout the province in that same amount of time. During the first 10 months of 1988, there were five times more power failures in Montreal than in Toronto. Premier Robert Bourassa would state, quote, The government has been worried by recent events and realizes that there are serious consequences for consumers, so we are taking concrete steps, end quote. An executive with a plastics company that lost thousands of dollars in the outage levied his anger at Hydro-Quebec, stating, quote, If a private company gave service as bad as that of Hydro-Quebec, it would close its doors, end quote. Some would state that a royal commission needed to be commissioned to determine why the province lost power. Premier Barossa would state, quote, Until we know the cause of the blackout, the request for a royal commission is premature, end quote. Norm Cohen, a solar forecaster, would say, quote, we know there's definitely adverse effects on power grids and transmission systems due to magnetic field activity. End quote. Over the course of about 500 episodes, one thing I've found with Canadian history and history in general is that times change and styles change. What was rare at one point becomes common at another. If you want to take advantage of the style of today, then Manscaped is the company for you. Manscaped has been providing safe products for men to groom themselves for years without the danger of sharp blades causing a very uncomfortable injury. Right now, Manscaped is offering all my listeners 20% off of their order. I recently received my first kit from Manscaped and it comes with everything to groom yourself from top to bottom. Even your nose and ears can be groomed with their patented Weed Whacker Trimmer. With their lotions, powders and trimmers, you can feel your best as you go about your day. Once again, that is 20% off with the offer code EHX at manscaped.com. Choose your products and enter the code at the checkout to save today. You can also click the link in my show notes. Hydro-Quebec would play down the role of a magnetic storm, stating in a release, quote, no direct link has been established, end quote. Even columnists such as Don McPherson would lambast the theory, stating, quote, Really, Hydro-Quebec? An explosion on the sun. What will the excuse be the next time we have a major blackout, which, judging by Hydro's recent track record, could be any time. The family dog ate all the electricity. Some big kids stole it. Extraterrestrials using a Hydro transmission line to boost a frozen battery on their UFO. Who does Hydro have thinking up its excuses? A committee of imaginative eight-year-olds whose previous experience was explaining to their teachers why they didn't have their homework done? End quote. To counter the outage, the New York Power Authority would provide 700 megawatts of power to the province while selling another 300 megawatts more if needed. Outside of Quebec, the aurora could be seen as far south as Texas and Florida, leading some people to worry that a nuclear first strike had occurred. There was shortwave radio interference and several satellites in polar orbits lost control for hours. NASA's TDRS-1 communication satellite recorded 250 anomalies because of the increased particles impacting its electronics, and the space shell Discovery was also in orbit and suffered a sensor malfunction. By March 15th, the news was reported that the cause of the blackout was indeed a solar flare and its interaction with the unique Canadian shield geography of Quebec. The power failure cost the province tens of millions of dollars in lost revenue. At the General Motors plant in Montreal, the power outage resulted in a loss of $6.6 million. One official would state, quote, We lost eight hours of production at 44.5 cars per hour. That is 356 cars at $18,000 each. That doesn't include the salaries of the people we sent home, end quote. A steel company in the province lost about $1.5 million, with an official saying, quote, All the steel that was already on the line in the hot rolling mills is now scrap, end quote. Everything from greenhouses to aluminum plants reported losses from the day. One Quebec resident who lost four tropical fish due to a power outage stated, quote, I hate Hydro-Quebec. If someone from Hydro were to knock on my door right now, I'd punch him in the face, end quote. Louis Champagne, president of the Union of Professional Engineers, would state, quote, Magnetic storms aren't something new, so why couldn't we handle this one? There's always an excuse. If it's not a magnetic storm, it's salt or ice. If we lived in a tropical climate, I could understand, but ice storms aren't exactly unheard of in Quebec. End quote. 
Throughout Quebec, despite the solar storm being the cause, Hydro-Quebec was the target of jokes and abuse from radio hosts, citizens, cartoonists, and one television show that made fun of the utility company for an entire hour. Of course, some would defend Hydro-Quebec. Ken Tapping of the National Research Council would state, quote, All those motorists sitting at traffic lights and cursing should realize it's not Hydro's fault. Hydro-Quebec is innocent. I don't think an engineer could predict something like this, and it's not something that can be solved by throwing in more money. Others would have theories that involve space, but not the sun. Christine Gombal would write, quote, It was like something used the power from our power station. I'm not a crazy person, but I think maybe it was spaceships. Jean-Claude Waugh, vice president of Hydro-Quebec, would state, quote, There was no malfunction of equipment, no human error. We were advised of the impending storm and we took the necessary precautions, but there was no way for us to predict just how intense the storm would be. Even a brand new system would not have been able to withstand this kind of storm. End quote. Rather than let such an event happen again, Quebec decided to learn from the incident. Louis Gibson, an engineer for Hydro-Quebec, would say, quote, To this day, this is the biggest impact a solar storm has had on an electrical utility. So this, for us, was a wake-up call, and we had to take this matter very, very seriously. Quote. The province would spend $2 billion over the course of the next six years to reduce blackouts and prevent such an event from happening again. After the outage, the company implemented mitigation strategies such as raising the trip level, putting in serious compensation on the lines, and upgrading monitoring procedures. Due to the upgrades to the system, it is believed that if such a storm happened today, Quebec would not lose power. The modern power grid can handle a 1 in 100 year geomagnetic event, and the March 1989 event was a 1 in 50 year event. The storm is considered to be the biggest geomagnetic storm of the space age, and the worst such storm since 1930, and the biggest outage ever caused by a geomagnetic storm. Dr. Victor Gazaskis would save the event and be quite right, stating, quote, this was a historic event. We're going to be talking about this for many years to come. End quote. I hope you enjoyed that episode and my look at the Quebec blackout. Next week, we're looking at Stompin' Tom Connors. If you like, you can email me at craig at canadaehx.com. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is Craig Baird, C-R-A-I-G-B-A-I-R-D, and I'm on Instagram at Bairdo37. As well, again, if you want to support the podcast, you can for as little as $3 a month. Just go to patreon.com slash Canada EHX. And you can donate to the podcast by going to CanadaEHX.com and clicking donate. I'd also like to thank all of my wonderful patrons, and I apologize if I get any names incorrect. Michael Matthews, Joanna Parker, Jeff Dahl, Vobs, Robert Page, Richard D., Colin Johnson, Jeff Hershey, Kyle Murray, Steve Pakin, Matthew Gartho, Lionel Romaine, Dr. Bob Turner, an anonymous patron that I truly do appreciate. Randy Hayden, Doug Campbell, Reg W., Deborah Carlson, Francis Helbling, Nick Zinri, Shannon Marshall, Clinton Martinez, Dimitri Shove, Aaron O'Hara Myers, Robert Dunseeth, Todd Casey, Catherine Roy, Luke S., J.P. Bear, Jason Hall, Phil Maynard, and Iris Gray. Information from Space Weather Archive, Scientific America, NASA, SolarStorms.org, Hackaday, Global News, Wikipedia, A 21st Century View of the March 1989 Magnetic Storm, Ottawa Citizen, Montreal Gazette, Windsor Star, North Bay Nugget, and the Vancouver Sun. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.